All right, so first let's go ahead and sign into Water Alert. As a public user, I can use login.gov. I can enter my email address and my password here, and if I don't have a login.gov account, I can create one. I just will need an email address, a password, and then a way to authenticate my account, like receiving a text message with a code. And I'm going to sign in as a USGS employee. And it signed me right in. It'll ask to verify my credentials, but I did that earlier, so it didn't ask me to do that. And now you can see it confirms that I've signed in, and this is my government email. So now that I've done that, I'm going to click My Alerts, or I can click Start Using Water Alert. It's the same button. It takes you to the same place. Now, if I wasn't signed in and I went to My Alerts, it would show me this screen. It would show me how to create an alert. So let's go ahead and use this process, and then we'll sign back in when we return to Water Alert. So I'm gonna click National Water Dashboard, and I'm gonna find the location that I want to create an alert for. So I'm just gonna zoom in anywhere here, and I'm going to grab this location, Grand River near Sumner. I'm gonna click on Water Alert right here. This is gonna take me back to Water Alert, and it's gonna take me to this specific page for this location within Water Alert. It'll show me the parameters for which I could create an alert right here. I can click either of them to drop down the information that it will require of me in order to create an alert. If I'm interested in seeing what values existed in the past, we have this little table right here from Water Watch. It'll show me yesterday's value and then some uh, historical values. If I want more information on recent values, I can always go up here and click on the location itself, which will take me to the monitoring location page for this particular location. So if I'm interested, and you'll notice that there are other parameters here as well, but we don't necessarily have water alert available for all parameters at every location. I'm interested in discharge, and I'm interested in seeing if there have been any highs or, or lows recently. So I'm looking at the latest seven days here for stream flow for discharge. And I'm probably going to set my threshold at... Uh, around 340 or something like that. So I see there are some values above that within the last week, but uh, that probably would not give me too many alerts. If I set the value too low, I would get too many alerts. So I'm going to go back to water alert and I'm going to have to sign back in because I can't actually proceed in this process without signing in. So I'm going to go back up to the top here. I'm going to sign in again, sign in as USGS employee. It'll send me right in keeps me on this particular location page conveniently. I can click discharge, see those values in the past still, but now I know, now I know what I want. I want above 340, right? So now that I've done that, I only want once per day. I don't want a ton of uh, notifications. And then I can have those notifications sent to my email or my phone number. I'm gonna click create alert and it's just that easy. It's confirmed that I have successfully created that alert, and then those details will be sent via email. Now, if I wanted to modify this particular alert for this location, I'm still on this location, as you can see by this indication right here. This little drop down allows me to edit or remove this particular location. This icon right here shows me that the alert will be de delivered via email, like I selected when I created the alert. I'm going to edit it and I'm going to say, actually, you know what? I want hourly. I do, I do want a little bit more frequently. The rate is still the same. Done editing. I can also switch the methodology of delivery, but I'm going to stick with email for right now. So I'm going to click done editing and that's it. And you can see how it just updated hourly right here. Now I might want to check on my alerts for other locations. So I can click on all my alerts right here and it'll show me the other locations for which I also have alerts. Notice this convenient color tag over here indicates to me the specific location that I am still on, also indicated by the URL. If I click this particular location, it changes the site, affording me the opportunity to create additional alerts for any other location that I already have stored in my alerts. If I want a new alert for a new location, though, I will want to go back to the National Water Dashboard, which I can access via this button right up here. 
And again, I'll be able to find any location across the United States for which to create an water alert. And I can do the same process that I did earlier, just click on any particular station and click water alert, and it'll take me to that location. And if I wanted to delete alerts, you may have seen that that was also pretty easy. This icon right here indicates delivering via text message. I could click this drop down and just click remove. Can't be undone, but you can always recreate an alert. I'm gonna click remove and it's gone. So that's it. That's how you create, modify, and delete alerts in Next Generation Water Alert. Thanks for watching.